How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for mixed pathology slash internal medicine for step one slash step two. Not going to be a lengthy clip here. Not going to waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 73-year-old guy has a three-hour history of dusky discoloration and coldness of his right foot. He has a history of palpitations and type 2 diabetes. If the underlying cause of this patient's acute presentation is not addressed, question wants to know which of the following is most likely to be a reason for a subsequent hospital visit. Almost sounds like a step three-ish question in terms of longitudinal management, but let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, venous thrombosis, wrong fucking answer. There's no relationship to the venous system in this question. Obviously, a lot we could talk about in theory. I could quickly mention that diabetes type 1 and type 2, uh, most common cause of chronic renal failure, which would be uh, nephrotic syndrome, diabetic uh, glomerulosclerosis, which uh, could lead to antithrombin 3 deficiency, which can cause DVT, superficial thrombophlebitis, renal vein thrombosis. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, superpubic mass, wrong answer. This is meant to be a nebulous slash slightly confusing answer choice. When students don't know an answer, they tend to choose obscure sounding shit. So this refers to a full bladder in theory. I mean, old dudes are all, all old dudes are going to have BPH. So US Assembly likes to mention suprapubic mass to imply overflow incontinence, okay? So that could be seen if this question related to BPH in some way. Uh, could also refer to anticholinergic medications, TCAs, uh, first generation H1 blockers such as diphenhydramine, as well as antipsychotics. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, dyspnea, wrong answer. Obviously a very vague answer choice could refer to a myriad of things. If the guy had uh, left heart failure, okay? There is no heart failure in this question, okay? If he had a history of left heart failure, uh, then we could say, yes, uh, acute left heart decompensation would lead to pulmonary edema and dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal electron, dyspnea, etc. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, charco joint, wrong answer. So this is a neurogenic joint. So type 2 diabetes mellitus, you say, well, if that's not managed, if he has poor glycemic control, then couldn't that lead to peripheral worsening of peripheral neuropathy? Uh, he damages his feet, can't feel his feet, and then he has vasculopathy, which can't heal the lesion, okay? So that's how you get a charcoal joint. Uh, pressure ulcers slash charcoal joint, uh, also uh, they'll describe this as disorganization of the tarsometatarsal joints. So this question, however, is asking about acute presentation, all right? which this dusky discoloration and coldness of the right foot is referring to an embolus from the left atrium. So he palpitations means that he has atrial fibrillation. This is often buzzy slash synonymous with atrial fibrillation on USMLA. So he's got a left atrial mural thrombus. It's launched off to the leg. It's caused acute limb ischemia. That's what this is, okay? The clock can launch off to the femoral popliteal vessels. Okay, you got acute limb ischemia. Now, the clock can also launch off to the brain slash eye, cause a stroke, TIA, retinal artery occlusion. It can launch off to the SMA, IMA, the mesenteric vessels, cause acute mesenteric ischemia. So choice A, abdominal pain, is the answer. Exceedingly high yield for U.S. Somalia, particularly 2CK. Now, this can seem like a bit of a vague slash nebulous presentation, I understand, but the high yield point of consolidation is it needs to be in the forefront of your mind. The patients with atrial fibrillation, it can go up to the left atrial moral thrombus, can go up to the brain, stroke TIA, retinal artery occlusion. It can go to the SMA, IMA, acute mesenteric ischemia. It can go to the legs, okay? Acute limb ischemia. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.